Yo, what's up, man? Elliot Hulse here today with a brand new video for you. A little bit of a different video for you. I'm about to drop a tremendous amount of value on you, so I encourage you to stick around, watch this whole video, take notes. There's a lot that I'm going to share with you that you could use to start taking action right away. And so what I'm going to share with you is perhaps the most powerful system that I've personally used in order to take massive action in my life and achieve all of my goals. Now, before I get started, I gotta let you know that this mind map is a byproduct of my poll that I put out just a few weeks ago to my best students in my King Transformation program. And I said, guys, what can I help you with the most right now? And so I gave them a few different options, everything from uh, relationship advice to fitness advice, but ultimately the guys wanted to know how to get more shit done. So it was really about productivity, achievement, success, dominating your life, dominating your day, dominating your business, and ultimately taking massive action in your life. So uh, with the men in my program, I put together a five-part course with exercises and all the information that goes in depth into each aspect of what I'm gonna share with you right now. I've also decided to make it available to you, and if you're interested in learning more about what I'm gonna share with you right now, which by the way, I'm giving, I'm giving you a whole lot. So you can get a lot done with what I'm gonna share with you here, but if you wanna go deeper, you wanna get the exercises and all that other stuff, there's a link down below where you can learn more about my massive action plan. So let's get started. So take massive action. One of the problems with guys that wanna take massive action in their life is that they don't even know where to begin. Taking massive action in the wrong direction will only get you to where you don't wanna be a lot faster. There really is no point in taking massive action if you're just spinning your wheels. And a lot of times, what we call action is merely activity. What's the difference between taking action and mere activity? Is that when you are steeped in activity, you're frantically doing things out of a sense of fear. Usually it's because we are disjointed, disintegrated, and disconnected from our core. And we're usually just doing things because other people are doing it, people say you should do it, this is what everyone else is doing, whatever the case may be. It's usually because we're outward focused, not inward focused. So activity is merely spinning your wheels out of the fear of not being able to keep up with the Joneses. That's usually the case. Action comes from stillness. Action comes from your core. Action is pure, it's true, and it is from you. And so anytime that you find yourself getting frustrated, there's a good chance you're on the wrong path. So with the Massive Action Plan, we've got five different steps that we wanna go through in order to make sure, number one, that we are following our soul goals as opposed to troll goals, that's what I call them. Soul goals come from you, troll goals come from other people. And so, when it comes to soul goals, there's a few things that, that I wanna make clear. There's a process by which you get in touch with the sound of your soul, the, the still small voice within, right? So rather than scrolling through and finding the newest shiny object to get you excited in order to start taking action or getting steeped in activity, what we wanna do is we wanna go in. We wanna Find out what is true for us. What are the goals that really ignite our true passion, our true calling, our true purpose in life? And so that's a hard thing, right? I mean, I've made lots of videos and I still get lots of questions from guys that are like, Elliot, how do I find my path? Talk about finding your path, uh, you know, knowing your purpose. All this sounds good. All this makes sense, but it's all very confusing if you don't know where to begin. Right? And we live in a disconnected world. Most of us, if we even believe that there's a soul, right? Uh, most of us are disconnected from our soul. We're disconnected from our truth. And so I offer a process to my students and the people who use my massive action plan and you now, because I'm gonna share it with you, by which you can get a better sense of what your soul is telling you to do, what you really want, the truth about you. The very first thing is that we want to use a revelation process, meaning allow, the, allow your goal, your soul goal to be revealed to you 
rather than reaching for it. And the best way to allow something to be re revealed to you is to get out of the way, right? Most of the time, what we want, what, we're, what we are, and where we should be going is right in front of our eyes. Except we're so bogged down with so many different ideas, too many different distractions, too many different people telling us different things that we never really get in touch with our truth. So the very first thing that we got to do is clear out the noise, clear out the clutter, clutter, clear out all the distractions so that it can be revealed to us. That's what I call the still small voice, right? Think about that. It's a small voice. It's whispering to you, but you can't hear it with all the noise that's going around all, you know, all around you. So there's a few things that I suggest in order to get into this process of allowing your soul goal to be revealed to you. Number one, which is not even here. I'm giving you a bonus one right now. You got to get away from people. You can't, what I'm going to share with you is something that you need to do on your own. Don't ask for advice. Don't ask other people's opinions. Uh, and it would be best to fast, which is number one, from food, but also from stimulation for a given period of time. It's literally like hitting the reset button. Clear everything out. Clear out your addictions to food. Clear out your addictions to uh, social media, to uh, stimulation, you know, phones, iPads, screens. For my suggestion is 72 hours. A 72 hour fast. And if you don't know how to fast, all you got to do is check out my five day fasting challenge YouTube videos. Uh, this is, I'm going to say it's optional because a lot of you guys are probably just not going to do it. I'm just completely honest. Um, but I highly, 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 highly suggest it. Don't go trying to find your soul goal when your soul was all cluttered up with everyone else's troll goals. And that is a byproduct of getting away from, you know, doing a dopamine fast to get away from screens, TV, media, and fast from food. Now you might say, well, what does food have to do with it, Elliot? Well, one of the things that we know happens when you begin to fast is that you clear your your mind gets clearer but that doesn't happen right away usually when people fast in the beginning it's very tough yeah? and they may even get more foggy head, headed and cloggy and clogged up so that's why i suggest a up to a 72 hour fast a three-day fast so by 72 hours you get into ketosis and then your brain starts working on ketones as opposed to glycogen which once all that glycogen drains out and you have that that down you'll kick back up and a lot of people have a sense of euphoria is associated with fasting. So I don't want to make this video all about fasting, but we know that, you know, the greatest masters, geniuses and saviors of the world, Jesus Christ, fast before they take action, especially with important things in their life. Right. So number one for the revelation process, fast, highly recommended. Number two is to write. And so what we want to do is we want to write at the speed of thought. We want to write so quickly that the filters, the ego filters, uh, do not, you want to fly under the radar, if you will. Right. And so here's a couple things. Number one, uh, a good practice would be to get out a notebook, write a question at the top of the page. The question I like to ask when I perform this exercise every quarter or you know, two times a year or so is God, what do you want to create through me? That's my question. You don't have to ask that question. You could say universe, you could say Allah, you could say higher inner being, guardian angel, whatever. But ask something, somewhat. Don't ask yourself. A lot of times when we ask ourselves, the answer comes straight from our ego. Universe, what do you want to create through me? Ask that question. Ask it with all your heart. Really want to know that answer. God, what do you want to create? One of, the way I did it, uh, I just performed this exercise a few months ago. And I said, what do you want to create with these hands? I wanted to know specifically what you wanted me to do with these hands. Uh, it's a part of the reason why I started making so, more, more, so many more videos again. It was revealed to me, hey, Elliot, use the gifts I've given you. you know, a lot of times what our path is is right in front of our face. Even I get clogged up and confused sometimes. So anyway, God, what do you want to create through these hands? What do you want to create through me? You write that at the top of the page. And then, like I said, you want to write at the speed of thought. 
You want to write Philip at least two pages or 20 minutes straight of answering that question. Let the answer be revealed to you. Uh, it seems a little strange and I would invite you to, I'm going to give you a resource right here, I invite you to read this book if you, if, you know, if this is something that's of interest to you. Oh, shit. Uh, it's called Writing Down Your Soul, right there. This is actually a slide from my program. Uh, Writing Down Your Soul by Janet Connor, the How to Activate and Listen to the Extraordinary Voice Within. Really good book. Highly recommend it. Uh, if what I'm saying doesn't give you sufficient evidence as to the power of writing in this way, read, you know, get the ebook, get the book, read it, Janet Connor, highly recommend it. It's where I learned a part of this process from, how to write. She calls it soul writing, right? Writing from the soul, writing down your soul. And then finally, the third part of this last revelation process is to write during the twilight. This was a tip that I got from uh, uh, Stephen Arneo, the author of Tough Times or, or Hard Times Create Strong Men. He's authored about seven books. He writes like two or three books a year. He says, Elliot, the best time to write is at the twilight. And what that means is when you first get up in the morning. So you could just imagine if you fasted for a few days, you fast, you've dopamine fasted, you get up first thing in the morning. Before you do anything, you just get out. He says, literally get out of bed, go over to your computer or pull out a pen, because right? what we're doing here is writing down, and start spilling. Boom, boom, boom. Don't edit. Do not edit. Just keep writing. That's the other thing about writing down your soul. Do not edit. This is a powerful, powerful, powerful process. Fast. Write at the speed of thought. Write at the twilight. So that's it. Uh, a powerful process I've used for many years in order to help me discover what my current calling is. What is my path right now? What is the new mission for you? and for me because life is happens in cycles right a lot of times we're like what is my path what is my mission and we're looking for like one uh, there will be one until it's done and so this is something that you may need to do time and time again right now while we're under quarantine it's a good time to do this right we got extra time on our hands you, you don't need to be you, you, you don't gotta go to work so you can fast uh, and so, and then you can get up first thing in the morning because you don't have to go to work. And you're right in the twilight. So anyways, perfect opportunity to take advantage of everything I'm talking about right here. So as far as soul goals are concerned, we want to use the revelation process. The other thing is we want to nail it down. Once we, once we ejaculate all over that page, write it all out, we want to take a highlighter and begin highlighting the keywords and the phrases that are most exciting to you, the things that uh, really stick out to you the most, formulate it into one statement about what you're going to do. And then you focused on that, you focus on that, that one thing. This actually idea came from, uh, the author's name is Keller. I forget his, his last, his first name, something Keller, uh, who wrote a book called The One Thing and the power of focusing on the one thing. One of, the, one of the problems that we run into is that we try to do too many things at once. One thing. Allow this process to reveal to you that next big step in your life, that next big thing you're going to do, and then just focus straight up on that. Do not get ADD. Do not swerve. Set boundaries for yourself, meaning I'm going to work on this for a month, three months, a year it's up to you and, uh, and and when it comes to the next step you'll know what works best for you because <laughs> I do not set yearly goals they do not work for me that's just me that's not the case for everyone which brings us to know thyself with regard to knowing yourself a lot of times we are on the right path we know the right goal we want to achieve it but we set ourselves up for failure because we're not going about traversing that path while being honest about our true nature, right? Like I said before, I've discovered that just based on my assessment, I'll talk to you about assessments in a moment, my self-assessment and wisdom, my experience with myself, I realize I'm not a long-term vision guy. I don't know what else to say. I wish I was. I admire those guys that are, but I just work best in one to three month increments. If I want to do something, I just say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get it done as fast as possible. I can't drag things out. It's just me. But it, that's, a, that's a matter of knowing myself, right? 
you may be a guy that has to take your time, it takes you a longer time to get the ball rolling, you want to gather up all your facts or whatever it is, and then over the course of a year, you fulfill your goal. That's fine, that's cool. The whole point is, you gotta know yourself. And so how do you come to know yourself? As a part of the massive action plan, that you can learn more about it, the link down below, I offer a few objective and subjective assessments. Assessments that allow you to get a, out, a sort of an outside and a deep inside look at your true self, to be completely honest with yourself. So some of them that you can do, right, I'm just laying it down on you, is the Briggs-Myers assessment. There's a really good website called 16personalities.com. Go take that personality test and find out what personality uh, is being expressed through you. What is your personality? And based on your strengths and weaknesses in that personality test, you'll know the best way for you to go about achieving your soul goal. So another one for me, I, I took that test and I am a campaigner, right? Some of the strengths of a campaigner is they can fire people up, they can get people going. They usually come up with a great idea, but one of our weaknesses, sometimes we're pretty unorganized, we're usually, it has, we have a hard time with the follow through, we're usually good at getting people going, but then when it comes down the line, like I said, I know myself, that doesn't, it's not my strength. One of the things that I do in my business is I have people that have that strength. In fact, my business partner, Chris, and my wife, Colleen, they are much better at long-term execution and administrative stuff. Me, I get excited about something, I wanna throw it out, I wanna get it done, and then I pass the ball. Like, I literally just pass the ball to Chris. He manages the team. That's another thing I recognize about myself as a campaigner. I'm not a good manager. I don't manage people well. I wish I could, it'd be nice if I could, it would sound good, my ego would love it, but it's just not me, I just gotta be honest. And so I invite you to be honest with yourself by taking, for example, the 16 personality test. The other assessment that I have in the program is called Character Structure, which is based off the work of Wilhelm Reich, which I've talked about in many videos before. Uh, it's where we get bioenergetics from, but it's basically how your personality is crystallized in your body type. And this stuff is profound, it's pretty cool. So you can look into character structure, you can look into my program, the bottom line is, when you begin to recognize the energetic dynamics in your body, the way your body carries and expresses energy, you start to get to a little bit uh, clearer indication of your character, therefore your strengths and your weaknesses. You see what I'm saying? Objective assessment, subjective assessment, I've got a questionnaire in there. Basic question, I'll give you some of the questions right now so that you guys can look at it. But, you know, asking, a, asking and answering questions for yourself is a great way to get a good idea of what's going on, what, how, what makes you tick, right? So, some, I'll just give you a couple of them. What is your most praised personality trait? What parts of your personality draw the most attention from people? What's most maddening or upsetting about you? Uh, about you? to your significant other, like your wife or girlfriend, what pisses her off about you? These are good things to, uh, these are good indicators that let you know a little bit more about yourself based on how other people see you, you see? So we've got objective, subjective assessment. Once we know our soul goal, we know our truth, we are being honest with ourselves after assessment, we then move on to the next step, which is to say no. Okay, good, we know our goal, we know the path to reach our goal because we're being honest with ourselves but there is inevitably going to be a bunch of stumbling blocks along the way because we've accumulated all kinds of responsibilities and uh, obligations and bad habits and time wasters and things that we got to absolutely clear the slate everything this we're talking about here is cleaning the slate so one of the things that i recommend my students do is create a not to do list you literally gotta sit down and you gotta say to yourself that these are the things I will never do again. This is like your rules for life, right? Jordan Peterson, 12 rules for life. Well, you create your not to do list rules for life. So I'll just give you a couple examples of mine, uh, which are all in the program. What, uh, number one, I do not argue with people online or strangers in real life. You see where I'm going with that example? That's a waste, that's a time waster. I see people doing it all the time, especially on Facebook. They're arguing with people. 
over politics, over religion, over all kinds of dumb stuff. I'm like, look, I make statements. I throw shit out there that are going to make people argue with each other. I do that all the time. I like it. I call it dropping a bomb. Drop bombs and let people argue. Let them sort themselves out. But I do not engage. And I invite you not to engage also unless, you know, you get a rise out of that. Uh, I do not watch anything that makes me afraid or angry. You know, these are all wasted of times. I do not stay out or party after midnight. I do not eat from popular food chain restaurants. So I've got about 15 or 20 of them here that I use. Those are my examples in my life. But you got to create for yourself a not to do list. You got to be very clear about what you will not do ever again. Next. All right. Clear the slate. You create an EDAD chopping block. EDAD stands for eliminate, delegate, uh, automate, and do. So there are a lot of things that you can't put on your do not do list because they need to get done. They're right? But you shouldn't be doing them. So there are certain things that, of course, we can eliminate. That's the do not do list. But delegate, right? What is something that I can get someone else to do? Even if I have to pay them or I got to, uh, you know, have an exchange with them. What can, like I said before, uh, I've got a small team that works for me in strength camp, but I don't manage them. I realize I'm not a good manager. I don't want to manage anybody. What do I do? I delegate it. I have Chris. Chris handles all the management. Something needs to get done. I just tell Chris. Chris makes sure the team gets it done. You see what I'm saying? I delegate that. Automate it. So, for example, Instagram. A lot of my Instagram posts, I don't sit there every day and write posts. They're loaded into a uh, software called, um, I don't remember what it's called, but there's some app and you can look it up. You know, they're automatic Instagram uh, posters. Anyway, the point is, if I can batch that work or delegate that work and then have them put it into a software that does it automatically, boom, that's amazing. I do the same thing with emails. What are the things that I automate? Uh, even with making these videos, I have a system where I basically automate it, where I make one video, I send it to my dudes, and they put it on that platform, put it on this platform, put it on another platform. You see what I'm saying? Automate, delegate, and then do. Obviously, the things that you're going to do. When it comes down to things that you're going to do, you got two kinds of things that you're going to do. You can do heartbeat work, which is the stuff that keeps the blood flowing, right? Things you can't stop doing. They get, they have to get done. They're repetitive, uh, but they keep. I call them heartbeat because they should really sh shouldn't be more than two things. In my life, I like to keep it focused on two things: love, dub, right? What's your heartbeat? Love, dub. Systol, diastol. Boom, 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 boom. So for the longest time, video email, video email. That was like what with the lifeblood of my business. Make a video, write an email. Make a video, write an email. Boom, 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 boom. Right? That's the thing that I do. The other kind of thing that you do are soul goal projects, and you got to make time for both heartbeat and your soul goal time. Right? Now that we know our soul goal. Maybe the heartbeat isn't totally assigned with our soul goal, right? Like when I last time I did my soul goal uh, revelation process, I realized, Elliot, make more videos, make more products. But I still had to boom, 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 keep my heartbeat going. You see what I'm saying? So I had to create more time, which I'm going to talk to you about in a moment, to achieve my soul goals. Good. So, revelation, knowing yourself, being honest, delegation, getting rid of shit. Flow within the structure. Now, this is where a lot of people, they want to begin, right? It's like time management. But like I said in the beginning, one of the biggest problems is you're managing time to do things that you really shouldn't be doing. So we had to do all that to finally get to this place where we're learning to build a structure that we can flow within. Let me talk to you a little bit about how I build my structure and how I use this flow uh, idea in order to keep it going. Number one, build blocks. You got to block out time in your day. You got to have and uh, you know keep it between an hour to 2 hours, but you got to build blocks for your heartbeat time and your soul goal time, right? So you build these blocks, these 2 hour, 1 to 2 hour blocks that are associated with all the things that you want to achieve, right? Some of it's going to be exercise, right? Meditation, heartbeat work, creative soul goal work. So you think about the categories of things that you that are necessary for your life, you know, time with family. You're going to list all those, but then you're going to plug those blocks in. I'll show you what I mean. Into a 
I like to use I like to use Google Calendar. I don't know if I love Google as a company, but I like to use their stuff. So anyway, uh, what you'll see here, you see all the, how it's color coded. Those are all the different blocks. Those are all the, all the different blocks of my day. And you'll see, so I have it structured in a way that I'm getting all the things that I need to get done within those certain blocks. You maintain those blocks. You maintain those blocks of time, right? But you gotta go with the flow. Which means one of the things that's really great about Google Calendar is I can grab one of those blocks and I can drag and drop it wherever I want. So here's an example. Uh, so that's what it looks like before the week is done, but after the week is done, that's what it looks like. Meaning, sorry, meaning I had to move a lot of things around, you know, like if I had a, a surprise meeting or whatever the case may be, you should be able to switch those things around and create a flow so you're not stuck into the actual the 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 time of the day that you're going to do it it's just that block of time is non-negotiable so if you have to move it to another day that's fine or if you need to move it later in the day but you got to create this blocks and then this flow and then finally within creating your structure your you know as far as time management is concerned i think that's the that's works for me, works for my team, works real well for a very long time. Having a calendar, Google Calendar is a great one, creating those blocks of times, make them uh, permanent, and then every week you can move them around. Grease the groove, that's the third thing with regard to flowing within the structure. Grease the groove means give yourself, you have to mark off time for you to do the things that keep your, keep, grease, keep greasing your engine, which means I put sunshine time in there. That's what I like to call it, sunshine time. So I have like a, a 30 minute block where I go, literally go outside and I just sit in the sun. I have hammock time where I literally, in between certain blocks, I lay in my hammock for 20 minutes. Whether you take a walk outside, whether you go to the beach, whatever it may be, create little recreation times throughout the day so you don't burn yourself out. And then once a month, once a quarter, on the interval that works best for you, you got to create two to three days where you shut down completely. Shut down completely and best thing to do is to go away. Do like a staycation. Get a hotel room if you can afford it and, and, and you know near you, near where you live. Go on a road trip. This is not a time to go get hammered and party. It's a time to rejuvenate, recover, replenish your resources so that you can keep doing what you got to do with a lot of vigor and zest. Right? And then finally, dominate your day. This is really what it boils down to, right? Every day's got to be a winner. Every single day is dominated by momentum, not perfection. Right? What does that mean? That means keep the ball rolling. If you, if you screw up, if you realize that you over, you over uh, committed, use the flow within the structure to change things. Don't beat yourself up. Don't feel like you have to stay rigid with it. Momentum means just keeping the ball rolling from week to week. Every week, look, look at the past week and ask yourself, how did I do? What could I do better? What did I do well? Momentum beats perfection. Uh, Real-time course correcting is basically what I'm talking about as well. You want to win every single day, but you want to be agile enough to make changes where things are inappropriate. You want to have a real-time course correction and just recognize that every single day is a small win. Celebrate small wins. Acknowledge yourself. Acknowledge that you did a good job by getting it done this day and then you just focus on the next day tomorrow. Literally take it one day at a time. Like I said, that's the that works best for me. Small chunks. I think about months, I think about weeks, I think about days. Anything more than that, it blows my mind. Too big for me. And I invite you to consider the same thing. Think of every single day like it's a brick and you're just laying one more brick for this empire, this building, this skyscraper, this castle for the kingdom that you're building. So I hope that helps, dudes. I think that you can get started with this right away. Start getting a lot done in your life, taking massive action. But if you like more, click the link down below and take massive action on my massive action plan. Hope that helps. Talk soon. Done.